Good morning. I am Dante Ang, the Chairman and CEO of the Manila Times. Welcome to today's roundtable. We're fortunate to have today some newsmakers, but not in a good way, uh, from sports. Uh, I'd like to welcome uh, joining us today from Italy. From uh, are you in Fornia, uh, Italy, uh, Mr. E.J. Obiena and um, Mr. James Laverty, uh, who is joining us uh, from from Dubai. Um, also one of uh, the people helping out um, uh, Mr. Obiena, uh, Attorney Bobit Bruce. Welcome, gentlemen. Uh, EJ, I hope you don't mind. You know, people you know, have been following your story for, for a while now. And I, I don't know if you've seen the editorials that Ma Manila Times have, uh, has written. And I had personally received uh, phone calls from your Federation President, Mr. Popo Iwiko. And in, in the conversation uh, that, that we had, uh, because he felt slighted by the stories he wrote, he said, why don't you ask these for me, Jay? So here we are. Thank you for obliging us. So let me ask you. I guess the first, the, the first question has to do with the money, right? So they have been alleging that, uh, that uh, there is an Estafa case. Uh, what, is your, what is your version of the story? Did, did you did you pay uh, your coach, Mr. Vitali, or, or not? Or was there a late payment? Maybe the the, the explanation should come from you. Um, I've paid my coach, and uh, I said multiple times I did made mistake. My mistake was I paid late, and I don't really understand what this exactly what could be filed as a staff a case there because the late payments are caused by late transmittal as well. And it's in pesos. I need to make all of that during the season. I mean, I think it's very simple to say that, you know, just transfer the money. It is if it's in pesos. And if I transfer it to the Philippine peso bank account of Italy, if that exists, the problem that right. doesn't exist. And right. I think okay. you guys understand. Yeah. yeah. At the moment, do you, do you still owe your coach any money? No, no. You're fully paid. Yes. Okay. Let's let's get to the um the 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 the, the late payment. Uh, you were saying something about converting it. Maybe you can start from the beginning. You no, know, from from people who, for you know for the people who haven't been following the story like we have. Um. Again, I don't know if you saw the editorials we wrote, but um. There seems to be in the editorial you wrote uh, a systematic problem, but maybe it should come from your mouth. I don't want to put things in your mouth. What is the situation that that led to the late payment? I think first, it was, of course, it's like, why am I supposed to facilitate the payment? I think that's the first thing. Second is, I received them in pesos in Philippine bank account. What doesn't help, there's no breakdown. So. So those three, I think, are the key factors that make all the payments really terrible for me to handle, first thing, not including the fees. Uh, Philippine pesos, as much as it's a good currency, it's a very hard currency to convert. So in Philippines, you can only buy US dollars, especially in banks. Not all banks sell euros. And to buy dollars, you need to be present in the bank itself. You as the person or the owner of the bank account need to be present itself. That's the reason why I have a joint bank account with my mom. So she can actually facilitate those when I'm not in the country. Um, I think that revolves around it. And then the second thing is um, transferring it to Europe. That takes a lot of fees and I need to find ways. If I do it the way I was recommended to do like the ATM, that's gonna be 50,000 pesos. That's 150 pesos for every transaction each day. And then that would be what, another maybe conversion rate. And then I don't even know how, how am I gonna trace it because that would be like cash. So imagine mm. if this thing actually comes up and I get the cues yet again of something that I didn't do. If I did do it the way they did it, they asked me to do it, I have no proof that I did pay my coach. You know, look, in, in a corporate environment, when someone joins your mm. company, there's a mm. system called float. 
and you give right. them, you say, oh, look, I don't want you out of pocket on any of your expenses. And so as a mm. result, we're, we're going to give you $5,000 up front. You start paying mm. expenses. And then that money keeps you without cash flow. The right. Philippine system of liquidation is completely retroactive. So that people have to front the money. I mean, it, it, it's mind boggling to me, the, these accusations, and nobody even understands a day in the life of EJ. So right. he doesn't get the money to pay his coach up front. It's given after the fact. And so who has to pay the coach in the first place? Where does he get that money from? Then what they do, if you, if you take a, a, a recent example, he gets, a, he gets some money from the PSC. And it's a big chunk of money with no breakdown of how much should go to rent, how much should go. You know, they've done the math, but there's no breakdown. So EJ's yeah, it's left to EJ. Along. Yeah. EJ's going along in his life and he's gotten this, this funding from the PSC and from Patafa. And then he gets an injury. And that was never put in the, the board resolution of the PSC. They don't give him any money to say, here's some emergency money for uh, treatment with a doctor. And so he's got all this money sitting in his account and he suddenly has a doctor bill. And the doctor bill, if you take the bill last year before the Olympics, that doctor bill was 8,000 euros. Now the doctor wants some money now. He's not giving credit. Right. So what does EJ do? He takes the 8,000 from the money that's been sitting there for his coach. Because you know why? He's like any of my kids. When my kids have to pay bills, the last person to get paid is dad. They pay the landlord before they pay me. They pay everything before me because you know why? The landlord isn't going to be nice. Dad is not going to sue me. Dad is not going to come after me for the money. So dad, I'm the last one that gets paid. Petrov is a good man. He's like a father to EJ. And so he says, you know, okay, I, I can wait and I'm delayed. And then EJ has to rush around trying to find the money to pay Petrov to, to offset that emergency. And you know what's so funny? He filed that claim a year and a half ago for the 8,000 euros. It's still never been reimbursed. He's still what out was of the medical treatment. What was the medical treatment for? His his back before the Olympics. He had these back issues in his in the 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 thoracic part of his spine, and the doctor had to do multiple treatments. It was seven thousand nine hundred euros, well, and he had to pay it in cash up front. Let me let me let me go back to something more basic because uh, people just here just you know have a very vague idea of what it's like to to live in in Italy. Uh, we understand that you know uh, non-residents are uh, restricted or you know challenged from opening a bank account. Do you have a bank account uh, where you are? Are you allowed to by the Italian government to, to have a bank? Because we've been hearing that your bank is actually from Germany. Could you confirm that? Yes, that's true. Yes, that's because true. technically, I cannot really open a bank here in Italy because I don't have like a, a residence. Well, now I can, but I still cannot Before, because I yeah. don't speak. Yeah. yeah, but I still cannot because I don't speak Italian. You can't transact over the counter, yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah, because I need to understand what contract I'm signing in with the bank. So those are the troubles. Right. How I know that? Because I did try it. I did try mm. to open one. It doesn't work. That's why my bank, N26, it's a mobile bank. You know, that's it's more like it's true. Like what the, It's like a Gcash, but it's a bank. It's yeah. a mobile bank. That's why I was words, able to open it's not it. like what people are imagining here. You just go to the corner and there it is. It's not the same situation for you. No, no. Okay. Okay. Now, let, let me get the timing right. When did you arrive in, in Italy for training? Uh, when did you um, move there? And then when did the, when did the first tranche of, of, um, of money, uh, when did that arrive from Patafa? Um. So I first actually met Vitaly at 2014, um, mm -hmm. at summer, summer in the Philippines. So that's when I started training with him. I was under the scholarship of IWF for until I believe 2016, if I remember it correctly. And then 17, I was there. I was actually living with, uh, with Tiago. I was staying at his house rent-free at that time. And, you know, 
I was just doing house chores, cutting grasses, you know, really doing chores in the house, like cleaning plates, like just to give back. He's a good friend of mine, but you know, you know, you, you need to feel shame living in a house for free. Therefore, um, sadly, 17, I also torn my ACL. So I was out for six months. I was back in Italy 2018, a summer. That's when I started to train with Vitaly. And from my remember at that time, my mom was the one who actually uh, gave me and we converted some pesos into euros because I was renting a, um, a room. It wasn't even an apartment. I was renting a room from an old lady that lives nearby. Uh, it was 300 euros and I was paying it with cash. And I remember that. Um, and then I believe around that time is when the maybe Patak, I'm not entirely sure exactly when the money came in, but I know um, funding from PSC, that's when I started to know. That was after I won Asian Championship. That was like April of 2019, because I remember um, I, wasn't, I was technically removed for like a week before that championship because I was injured and they said that there's no performance. So um, I wasn't receiving any funding from that time. So I received, I believe, maybe a month or a month or two after that, I received some funding. I'm not, maybe not received, but border solutions were approved. Like it's really complicated. Um, after that, yeah. And then after that, I think funding was delayed, but not that big of a delay, but it was more, I think the, put it in chunks. And then I remember I was filing for realignment. So yeah, it's really, it's a bit of a mess. If even I'm actually in the middle of it, just really difficult to remind, remember everything. Paul. Yeah, but what, could, could you explain what Mr. Lafferty was saying earlier that you have to front the money and then, re, uh, and then you know, ask for a reimbursement? Just so for people to understand, you know, what the, what is the system, right, um, um, in, 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 uh, with regard to, to, to your funding? Because um, uh, I, I think people have certain assumptions, but it's, it's quite different from the reality that you, that you experience. How's it, how does uh, it so, work? So, I mean, it works in two ways. So one is if it comes earlier than the period that it was supposed to be, they call it financial assistance. Then if it's late, they call it uh, reimbursement. But most of the time, PSC doesn't really financial assistance. That's why I had conversation with Patak. I was like, who is supposed to actually front the money if it's not going to be PSC? And then they said it should be Patafa, But that rarely ever happens. Um, I'm, with all due respect, that rarely ever happens. So most of my things or anything, it needs to be fronted. Like the same with the back surgery, the same with now with my knee surgery. The case is ongoing. It's still the same situation. Um, I'll be the, the best example. Competitions, my competitions, all those travel expenses, I need to pay that first and then I need to reimburse, reimburse it. Yes. And that in itself is so complicated. That in itself is so you know, I, I, in my opinion, it's a lot easier if I have like a pool of money. This is for your training. And then yeah. I just drag it, you know, I take it. Okay, this is expenses for my training. I take it from that pool. And then the moment it's actually run out, then I know that, okay, I expended all the, the funding. It, it never works that way. That's why a lot of reimbursement happens. And, you know, whatever processes that they told me to do, I just follow it because okay. that's how I get the money. Yeah, we'll get to that in a minute, but let me move back to your situation. So you said that you, you don't have a bank account in Italy. You have a mobile bank from a German bank that, you know, you try to uh, do your transactions. Uh, with. Um, you mentioned living with someone. Is that the typical arrangement of the other athletes that are there also training with you from other countries? Are they also cutting grass and doing other things that... Uh, that, that, that uh, because as I uh, describe for those who don't understand, what is your situation like wh where you're training? Um, right now, I have nothing to complain. I'm living in a yeah. certain, like a flat 
a normal flat at regular apartment, uh, which is roughly 10 minutes walk to the training center. So okay. to be honest, I'm golden. But before all of this, I needed to win the Asian okay. championship. I needed to qualify for Olympic Games to be able to get this. But still, if you're going to compare my situation, that's just, you know, I, I don't think we should because okay. Philippines okay. is Philippines. But yeah. if for the sake of comparing my Brazilian no, friend about lives in the, the village. Athletes. I'm talking about the other athletes from the other countries who are there in Italy. I yeah. mean, because so, is it true that you're not part of a club, right? Uh, the field, I guess the, the arena club. So you really essentially have to live outside the club. Is that is that the, is that the arrangement or is correct us from wrong? Let us help us understand your situation. Then. Yeah. So technically you can stay inside, but then you're, okay. you're paying like 115 euros a day uh, to because train. Because you're not a member live. of the club, right? Yeah. Okay. And then my my buddy uh, from Brazil actually lives in the villa. It's like uh, that's where we ha that's why we were able to train during uh, COVID. He had a nice. like a garden, you know. He had like this his house. He had the like a garden where he can run and train. Um, the Chinese guy lives across the street in a hotel. Um, so those are the situation. It's a totally different. Um, dynamic the way I live <laughs> and the way those yeah. two guys do. so you, you're you're bunking in the athletes from China are in the hotel that's your situation yeah that's their I, situation. So I assume the Italian athletes are, are are in a dorm somewhere yeah the Italian athletes they have their you know they can live inside the training center because it is under Italy it's a Olympic yeah. training center of Italy therefore if they have camps there they live there for free they don't they don't really need to pay anything there. Yeah. So in, in Filipino parlance, you're like in the gilid. <laughs> you're in, in the, around the arena, you, but you're outside. You're, you're not, you don't, you don't have the same perks uh, as the guys Filipino who are members po, of the club. Kung sa Filipino po, uh, nakikitrain lang po dun sa training center. Okay. I do okay. pay, I do pay, pay um, like a uh, stadium and, you know, to use the stadium, but at the same time, yeah. nakikitrain. They, they really have their, it is not meant for me to train. You know, the right. reason why I train is my coach. That's that's right. That's the main reason I'm there. Okay. Now let, let's go back to the money. Why 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 was the arrangement like that? I mean, why were they sending you pesos knowing that you're in Italy where the currency is either euros or liras? Um did why did you agree to that situation? <sighs> that's the thing. I never agreed into it. I never agreed. Okay. I was put into it. You know, that's okay. um, agreeing into it. I would say like, okay, give me the money, then I'll pay it to my coach. I never said that, at least not that I remember. On the contrary, I remember asking, pay my people directly. And this is why, mm. you know, if, if you look at the most recent uh, budget proposal that I did for Paris 2024, and this recommendations, because I, I experienced a lot of problems. Therefore, I put recommendations on how to smoothen everything out because I don't think I should be like at least three hours in the table just figuring things out. So I think the payment should go directly. And I even said like payment on the first Monday of the month, but mm. directly to the bank accounts of the people. So I remember I was being asked for Vitaly's um, like CV, um, his passport, his bank mm -hmm. account um, a year and a half ago, mm. back in 2020. Um, I was able to give it. I believe in a day's time, I was able to give you it. That's it. why okay. I don't, yeah, that's why I don't fully understand why the money still went through me. And I remember a conversation with the secretary. I said, why is the money transferred to me? And they just said that PSC released it. And then they, got, they gave me the runaround. It's like, okay, I have no choice. So Jim, I need another help. So, mm. you know, that's, that's how the situation kind of went. It wasn't like I volunteered for this work. No, I volunteered yeah. to be an athlete. I volunteered to go here and train and compete for the Philippines. Yeah. But I never volunteered to be the paymaster. Not in a right. single word did I do that. Right. And like you said, you know, if you go to the bank, you don't speak Italian. It's a challenge for you. Um, <laughs> uh, um, so you have no objections 
to Patafa paying your coach and your other team members directly. Um, no. uh, yeah. So you're doing that. Walk us through the process. So the, I, I heard from the news, Patafa would deposit your joint account with your mom in Manila in pesos. What does it take? Go, walk us through the process. What does it take for you to, to get that money where you are? How, that's, what, that's what, another, what, what do you what the, what are the steps you take that's another tricky thing because psc released checks in two ways again again like one okay name after me the other name to patafa if it's named to patafa they're the one who's going to receive it it's their bank account okay. and then the other ones that are named after me i receive it on my bank account which sometimes are deposited by my mom i believe one or two checks were hmm. deposited by my mom to my bank account but the rest, Patafa facilitate everything. It's Patafa who's doing it. They do right, it so, across, literally across the building because there's the bank. Right. <laughs> right. So if, if it goes to Patafa, Patafa deposits the money in Manila in your bank account here, the one you have a joint account with, in, with your mom. What does it take for you to get that money out in Italy? What, what are the process? Because you're... I don't know, do you text? <laughs> do you G-cash your, you your coach? Here's the... 80,000 or how does it work? So because normally I ask. It sounds like it's just simple. It's a simple, because people are, you know, assuming ah, it's deposited, he just takes it out of the ATM, that's it. Walk us through the yeah. process. When they deposit the money, what does it take for you to get it out in Italy? So the first thing I, I do is I call Jim. <laughs> I was like, okay. so Jim, may I help, ask for your help? I have an issue again. I need to transfer this much to pesos to be in euros. And I would ask him, would it be possible to pay you in pesos? The first few transfers were okay. But it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger because expenses are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So I believe um, the recent, the most recent one, I was, I was like, I gave, so I was like, I can pay you in pesos now if you can, if you want, but I might receive some money in the next few weeks in euros and I would be able to repay you in euros. People make this into some huge drama. Like we don't understand there's transfers from Germany and Dubai and can't, it's not, it's not something complicated because you don't pay them in the right damn currency to begin with. Yeah. He has and to so go they, through all this machinations yeah. uh, to, to, to get it done. I mean, all yeah, of so, those expenses are in euros. Right. So, um, I'm sure this has been communicated to Patafa. What is, what message are you receiving? I think you mentioned earlier, you know, uh, you know, you, 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 your preferences and the currency. What, what is the official reply? Why can't they just give it to you in euro? Why can't they just give it directly to uh, your coach and the others who are supposed to receive them? Yeah, that, that's that's a really good question because I actually sent that on the email that Patafa released in their press uh, press conference without my reply. I told them that. I told them, you know, you guys, I told you, you guys, you need to pay the, the people directly because I'm shouldering this and that. And they never replied again. The, I, don't, I don't understand why I receive an email saying, like, you know, in the first place, Patafa should be paying the coach. If I gave them the bank account a year and a half before and I felt like, what is this? Like, why are you telling me this now, October of 2021? For what, what reason? Therefore, I answered a bit, you know, a bit pissed. I was like, Ate Lucy, I, I'm the one who told you guys this. I told you guys to pay him directly. You have his bank account. I gave you all the things that you asked me for. But somehow you guys paid it to my bank account. Therefore, I just tried to facilitate it. And I said, you know, you remember that my osteopath was working for a year without pay. And they know about that. Not because I was late, not because the money was with me. No, because it was really late. The reason was like COVID and this and that. And mm, I understand yeah. it, but, but I never, so sorry, I'm, I'm going away from the topic. So basically, Every time I bring that up, I get maybe one or two replies. Either the PSC also doesn't reimburse us, or it's easier to go in PNB. Mm. So those two. 
never <laughs> never in a single way that they say yeah we can't or no it's just always some hindrance it's not like it's impossible it's some hindrance because they were able to but some of the expenses You've told yeah, them, look, I don't I speak did. Italian. I can't transact over the counter, um, right? Help, help, please. I mean, they, they, they. There's no reply. That's that what you're saying? Oh, oh, that's a lot. I, let's just say the reply were never really something that addresses the system or, or addresses okay. what is what is wrong. If, if I could add in, because at the time this Go was ahead. going on, I I was talking with Pope Boyd, you know, fairly often. I. You know, the honest truth of it is, this is my, this is a, just an opinion. I don't think the top, uh, they can handle local athletes. And easy. This whole thing of having someone train overseas was a whole new game full time. And, you know, when I would talk to him, he would get so angry. Like my girls, Lucy and Merrick, well, they're working so hard for EJ and they're doing, and, you know, we would have these fights like, what is the purpose of the DAPA? Is it to serve the athletes or serve the administration? And that was the last discussion I ever had with was that that exact statement. Which was so, so I wanted I wanted to get to that because no. uh, because Mr. <laughs> Mr. Wico has been telling media and I've seen his interviews in ANC and, and elsewhere. He was saying that all athletes do this. This is pro forma. Oh, so I wanted to ask EJ, what? how many how many Patafa athletes? are actually abroad and being funded by Patafa because he makes it out to say that, ah, oh, every, this is, you know, uh, this is normal. So maybe it should come from you. How many Patafa athletes do you know of uh, are abroad being funded by Patafa like you? Um, Filipino, Filipino athletes like are just Filipino. really out of the country for training? Yeah. That's me. That's only you? Yeah. If you're asking... Filipino athletes that train outside of the Philippines, there's more which are the Phil Americans. But yeah. people that live in, in Philippines that are outside of Philippines to train, that's only me. Yeah, but your situation is different from the Phil Americans who are training abroad. Is that right? I mean, uh, is there a parallel or is it totally different? Um, I think there's in similarities. Terms funding, that... In terms of funding, yeah. I think there's similarities, but the difference is, you know, they live in a country where they're they're living. Mm. They they don't have these restrictions that I have. They have bank accounts in the U.S., which hope I believe it's easier to convert pesos in dollars. And they can speak and English. Easier to transfer, and they speak English, and you know they have their parents there. They they literally have their banks there. They they live there. You know, mm. I don't I don't live in Italy. I live in Philippines. Everything that I have is in Philippines. And I'm dependent here in Italy to the system that I'm put in. Yeah. So I wouldn't say yeah. similar, I wouldn't say the same, but there's some similarities. Okay. Um, let me ask you. Uh, yeah, but, about... but Dante. Yeah. Dante, they've never, they've never had this situation ever. A Philippine mm. homegrown athlete training permanently overseas, who is on the European circuit. I mean, Patafa has never had an athlete ever be in the Diamond League. EJ has been a medalist in the Diamond League. They've never had this. And when you're in the Diamond League, you're on airplanes all the time. And I'm telling you now, if I went back to my track and field days, I would never pole vault ever. Because when you're a mm. pole vaulter, your luggage requirements are just a nightmare. You have to find an airplane that will take your pole. Right. And a pole vaulter is useless without a pole. And you look at the yeah. stress he went through before the, the Olympics. We couldn't even, we had to get the Philippine ambassador to Italy involved to get his poles on the plane. Other regular expenses, how much are you out of pocket now? Not just me. I mean, out of pocket from some other people. I think easy close to 2 million pesos. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And can you reasonably expect to be reimbursed for that or? Uh... I'm, I'm hoping to be. I okay. mean, it was announced in the public that I'm supposed to get funding for my surgeries. 
Um, so hopefully it gets finally paid the the one for my back surgery, which Patapa right. has the receipts of, and my knee surgery now. That in itself, right. I think both are very close to one million, and then my accommodation, um, which was from September to December, and then now the hotel here. Yeah, it's it piles up, man. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. Mm. So again, I'm sorry for asking, you know, uh, basic questions and you're probably tired of this, but just for people who don't understand, right? Because the, 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 the statement from Mr. Rico is just, oh, there's a pro forma document. He just fills it out. Walk us through. So walk us through the process. So assuming you fill out that form, is it really as simple as just filling in the form and emailing it? Or what do you go through, right? Say, these are my medical expenses. What do you go through before you actually see the money? Oh, that's not the case. That, okay. that form, maybe that form is good if I buy, let's say, a rubber shoes on, on a store and that's it. That's all my expenses in a month. Just remember, I live outside of this training center. Therefore, I need to buy food, utilities. Mm -hmm. I need to pay. I need to pay my, my gas. You know, all of this utility expenses. These are all in Italian. So if I go, let's say, to a supermarket, I buy water, um, egg, chicken, or um, say broccoli on that day. That's for my breakfast for the next few days. I need to translate those in English. I need to convert those euros into pesos in the BSP rate, not the rate that, that's standard. It's a BSP rate. Then I need to attach it in a bond paper and then actually fill it up. And that I would need to send from Italy, the original copy, back to the Philippines. And then from there on, Patafa normally is the one who facilitates it. They liquidate it. They're the one who processes it. That's how it works. It was never me directly liquidating to PSC. That only happened November 11th of this of last year, where I received a letter from Patafa saying that you liquidate this directly. Right. So, and so... The process you're describing, when you know you you make the list, translate it, send the the receipts. How long does it circle back to you as reimbursement? I mean, what is average what is the time? Windows? Yeah, it's average time. Mm, maybe, positively saying six months. Cool. Positively. So in yeah. in the meantime, you're still accruing expenses, right? I mean. Yeah. So. Like I, like I said, you know, I, I paid that medical bill for my back back in 2020. Until now, it's not yet paid. And it's been, what, almost two years? Yeah, two years now. So uh, since you mentioned Tokyo, we've been hearing another rumor. I don't know maybe if you're allowed to talk about it. Regarding the polls you used for competition, we heard that there was some difficulty acquiring them or difficulty in them arriving or... What not? Maybe is there a, a story there that hasn't been shared? Maybe you can give us some background. I have polls that I need to get replaced, and I need polls that are bigger because we're planning to do 18 and 20 step outdoor. So I would need stiffer polls. And Vitaly already said he's going to facilitate the order. If the polls might hitch the distributor in Italy, or maybe one of my friends can bring it. We don't know exactly how the posts are going to get transported due to COVID. So Vitaly is going to take care of that. He's a good friend of the manufacturer. Let's leave it at that. Then he agreed. Said, okay, how much is it? I said, I think it will be roughly for the six, seven posts, it would be like $3,000, including shipping and everything. Well, that's, I said, you know, that's a really good price. Not because it's me, because of my coach. And then we had that conversation. Posts were manufactured, I believe, mid-April. And May was ready to, no, actually April was ready to ship. So I got a message from Vitaly. Okay, we need to get the payment ready. Pay, you see a spirit. And then I asked Patafa office, including Mr. Wiko himself. I said, sir, may I get the funding now? This and that. And the tone changed suddenly. At this time, I was like, no, 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 no. It needs to be us dealing with these guys. It needs to be us dealing with the manufacturer. We're going to be the one, like, the, the invoice needs to be our name, not yours. And it's like, okay, um, I just remind you, sir, the price that we have is because of Vitaly. The moment Patafa reached out to UCS, this is going to be different. 
And I said, I cannot tell you how I'm going to receive it. How is the cost of duties? I really have no idea. This is why I asked Vitaly. We're asking favors, you know, we're really asking favors to get those posts in as early as possible. Then the next thing I know, the day after, I received, Vitaly received a call from UCS Spirit telling him, hey, I received a call or a, an email from Philippine Federation. They're going to take care of the polls. And then things now got mixed up. Well, it shouldn't have been, but gets mixed up. So UCS ended up getting a bit um, displeased that their special price with Vitaly is now known by the Federation. But still, there's a standard pricing for the polls. It's standard everywhere. The price went up maybe six, 7,000 euros. I'm not entirely sure how much without shipping costs. Then the polls basically arrived here a week before my, my departure for Tokyo, which is still acceptable, which is still okay. But the sad part is it's damaged. It's damaged. I have photos of the polls that are damaged. And I said, I called, I, remember, I called Edward, I said, you know, you guys are cutting my legs off. How am I supposed to compete in Tokyo without the poll, without my these series the, of polls? These, these are the polls you ordered or the, the, yes. the ones that, uh, so they arrived in Italy damaged? Is yes. Is that what you said? Okay. Yeah, because oh, okay. I actually, I warned them about that. So I said, you know, we need to get this done as early as possible because there are a lot of things that can go wrong. One, shipment delays. Second, they arrive and then they're broken. That's why we need it as early as possible. If there's broken, we can ask UCS to ship it another one. You know, at least manufacture and ship it, then they'll have it. I'll have it before Tokyo. That didn't happen. It arrived a week before broken. I have one jump session before Tokyo. I had no choice but to use that. That's dumb for me. I'm sorry. Now thinking it's dumb. Maybe I was not thinking reasonably. I snapped one of them, snapped it. Snapped That's the it. new one. And yeah, then at that time, Vitri was pissed at me. I said to Edward, you know, I think I'm done. I said, you guys didn't confirm first. My post going in the plane from Rome to Tokyo. That's first. So I don't even have any idea if I'm going to have posts in Tokyo. Second, the posts that I need for Tokyo are broken. So how, how am I supposed to go to Tokyo and compete? I'm killing myself here. I believe I have a chance to win a medal. You're cutting my legs off. Those are my lines. You're cutting my legs off. Then I said, you know, out of spite and out of maybe emotional anger, I said, let's just go to Tokyo and have a vacation there. You guys know that from the day I qualified, I didn't need to push myself. I'm going to be in Tokyo one way or another. During COVID, I didn't need to train. I'm going to be there one way or another. I'm going to be an Olympian. The moment I clear that bar, I'm going to be an Olympian. And I felt really betrayed. And I feel like the, the people that's supposed to be helping me achieve something historic is the one sabotaging it. That's how I felt. I don't know if it's true. I don't know the, the sense of it. I didn't understand it. I just yeah, so felt like I'm being... Yeah, you know, so let's stick, let's stick with let's stick with the facts. So you 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 arrive in Tokyo, I suppose with broken poles, or did you bring them yeah, all? Broken series. So so you brought you 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 arrive in Tokyo with a broken with some broken poles. What happens next? Yeah, so Mr. Capistrano, out of his own, from what I understood, out of his own pocket, ordered the same set of poles going to Tokyo. Those Who's poles Mr. arrived. Was it Terry Capistrano? Okay. Are, um, previous secretary general. Okay. So he got me posts there. I wasn't able to train on them. I wasn't able to compete with them. So I was literally haggling posts in Tokyo. I was basically feeling them during the qualifications and hopefully I get used to them by the final. That's how now, it went. Yeah. So normally, so that people understand as a routine, how, how competition, just give us an idea because people, I don't understand it. Yeah, so we have a series in which okay. approach, in which effort of us, like let's say I put 90% effort in my run. This is the pole that I need to use for a height until this height. You know, you need that. You need that consistency because when it comes to championship, it's the attempts. 
I didn't right. have that. And so those normally, normally those, how, how long do you need to, I guess, get your feel like that? I mean, what's a, what's a typical preparation time just to get, to, I would to, say to get used to your poles? For training wise, I think it's not that difficult, but competition no, wise, I think I would say two, two, three competitions before you actually hit that. Wow. You get a sense of okay. it. You know, you get a sense of, okay, this are the poles I need to be using with the bars at 590. I can make right. 580 with this pole on a good day. You know, these, these doesn't come without competition because it's only then you can actually test them. So the poles that you use in Tokyo, you've never used in training like you would normally would in any competition, is that right? Yeah, I never yeah. used them in training. I have never used them in competition. Is it? I is was it, literally you know, going in blind. Yeah, again, just for people who are not familiar with with you with your sport, is it? I mean, uh, my my the image that comes to my mind: you break in a shoe, right? Uh, before you 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 use it in a game. Um, so, how many days before your I guess trial jump? Your you know be, before the poles that Mr. Capistrano arrived. What, uh, what period are we talking about here? I just know it was after already the fact that I had my last jump session. Um, so we have a plan, I believe it's like maybe a week before my qualification. That was the last jump session that I have. And I believe the poles were, weren't there yet at that moment because I remember I was checking them. I was so happy that they arrived. But, you know, at that time, I was, uh, it, it's very stupid to say, but I was never complaining about it. Not because I, I'm covering up from people, but because I really was trying to believe in myself and say, you know, it's equipment. Don't think about whatever things that you know. It's already here. Maximize whatever you have. That's my mindset going into it. But the proof says otherwise, because I needed a week of training after Tokyo, and then I needed a meet and two before I jumped 591 in Paris with the same post that I have in Tokyo. And then fast forward a week after, I've had the most consistent jumps ever in the whole season, and then jump a new Asian record. So it is indeed true that you need to get used to your pulse. It is indeed true that it takes time. Looking back at all of this, um, is there some uh, regret? Do you think that you used to, are you thinking maybe if I only did something differently uh, on your part, I mean, it, it might have helped or changed the outcome that you're, that you're facing now. Is there any such thought going through your mind right now that if you've done anything differently, things might be different? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I think one of the biggest thing is, to be honest, speaking out and really, you know, I should have said the truth, the whole truth. And I think that would have been done. And the problem is, I was trying to be respectful and got the best out of me. Um, not that I'm saying you shouldn't respect people. You should. But I think um, one thing I learned here, respect is not on the position, it's earned. And it's a hard yeah. thing to learn. Yeah. One of the yes, charges thrown at you know against against you is the alleged falsification of I uh, know liquidation report. From what yeah. I understand from the Patafa releases, uh, you wrote in your liquidation that you uh, that Coach Petrov has already been paid. Where in fact they said that uh, Coach Petrov at that time, 2018, was not yet paid. That was uh, one of their points. Uh, can we hear mm -hmm. your side of the story, please? What's your yeah, side of the so, story? Yeah. So if you look at the acknowledgement receipts, the, the header is made by Patafa. Oh. That's one. Second, it was, I believe, dated like October. They asked me that, and then I sent it to them. So, you know, they knew that it was not yet the period, and they knew that there's still no money because they're the one who's supposed to pay Vitaly at that time. Hmm. 
And I think what solidifies that is my email exchange with the PSC personnel. I sent them an acknowledgement receipt saying that paid, but on my email itself, where the, the thing is attached, it says like, please pay the people directly in their bank account, the following bank accounts. And then this got endorsed to some division and then it got endorsed to another division until it gets endorsed to the top of. You know, this um, antedate or predated receipts, this are, sorry, something of uh, instruction. It is a procedure that they told me. I don't understand why they're saying now that they didn't tell me anything or they're making it seem like it's, it's a shock for them. They're the one who told me to do that. Sila po nagsabi nun, inutos po sa akin, gawin ko, ginawa ko. I think that's as simple as that po. Have you submitted na your ano, liquidation report sa PSA full, in full? Uh, from my side of things, as of yes, the moment we're speaking, for, I have submitted everything that I need. And the, uh, what I understood is the pending contract of Vitaly that only Patafa mm-hmm. can provide. And at the moment, that is still in their office for some reason. They're, they're not giving it away. It's a contract ni Petrov. Main... May nasabi yung Patafa na hindi sila sure kung si Petrov yun pumirma nun. Parang oh, they saying na um, falsified din yung pirma ni Petrov. Yeah, I actually asked Vitaly for the copies of contract that he has. So um, I have email from Vitaly attached to the contract. Um, I think it's the same. I mean, same. where am I supposed to get that? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know. Yeah, can I, so I, can I, can I share? Something? I can share that. Yeah, so I I I I read, I I saw, I I I I I caught that part. Eh. He said, "Oh, there's three. We have three documents from yeah. that's supposed to be signed by Petrov, and they seem to be different." So he said, "Oh, oh, we're not writing. We're not signature experts, but uh, I think we have to get one to determine if they're if they're real or not." Oh. Diba? I mean, I you Fred, diba? Have you been? Have, have you ever been to a bank? Oh, diba? You go to a bank. He said, oh. "Sir, medyo mali yung pirma mo, eh. The, the, will the bank tell you? I wanna, I'm gonna call a signature expert to see if this is real or not. What they ask you is, can you please just sign again? You know, and and actually, I, I have no idea about this. And then, then, then that whole information got released into a, into a, one of those, ano, mga fake news sites. Na you cannot trace who owns it, diba? Then they release. Then sabi na, the news said, oh, this is from a. And 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 uh, and this and this and this is what's written there, right? So from a uh, from a uh, from a uh, un ano, uh, unnamed source inside the PSC. So they released the same documents. When I looked at it, I I can't see the difference. Eh? There might be some slight difference, but is it that major? And the thing is, what you do if you have if you have those documents with you, the best thing to do is just call Vitali. Vitali, are these your signatures? And ask him, right? And, um, and he will say, oh, no, this is not mine. EJ falsified this, EJ falsified that. He will say that, man, right? But, but they didn't do that. And what they released to the press is that I think it's, I think it's false. I think, it's, I, think, I think the signatures are falsified. They, re, they released their opinion. I don't know what's the purpose of that. Right? But, but uh, that information gave you a particular understanding. of uh, it, it raised questions with people like you. That's why you're asking EJ about it. When the best thing to do was just send those signatures to Vitaly, and Vitaly would have just said, "This one is mine. This one is not mine. This one, all, all of these are mine." Diba? And I think that can be easily solved by just having Vitaly send those signatures back to Patafa and the PSC. Diba? It's been a while. That's January four. That's they made that press con in Janu- on, on January four, mm-hmm. and uh, like what EJ said, his um his. Liquidation is pending because the Patafa contract has not been given to PSC. Uh, if that's the reason, then all they have to do is probably just ask Vitaly if it's true or not, or or at least give give it to the give it to PSC and tell PSC that I think it's false. I think the, I think the signatures are falsified. Then let PSC handle it from there. But uh, I don't know with the EJ. I think from from EJ's point, it hasn't been released to the PSC up up, up to this point and still pending. But on on that on those signature issues, I I I, I respect Patafa's view. If they feel that it's falsified, then that's their view. But there are ways and ways to clarify this and to verify if these signatures are true or not. 
'di ba? Madali hindi man hindi man yang komplikado eh, madali lang naman yan eh. But to limit hanging, 'di ba? That creates more doubt, eh, 'di ba? It creates doubt on EJ, 'di ba? It's if there's a narrative that oh that EJ falsified it even if if it's not said directly, 'di ba? It EJ is the one suffering, but there's a lot of ways to clarify this and EJ is more than happy to clarify this. Vitaly, I mean EJ can talk to Vitaly now and you can they can send Vitaly those contracts and Vitaly can verify whether those, those signatures are his or not. Yep. Thank you. That's the best way to do it. Yeah, it's the easiest to do it. Okay. Another question, EJ. EJ, uh, yes, according to the PSC, your request mo for for the 2024 Olympics has already been approved, pero until 2022 lang. Pero hindi pero nila na release until you you submit your liquidation report to them. Tama po ba? Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. So that's that's what they're saying. Yeah. That's the conversation we're having with uh, the one that Patafa released in their press statement. That's yeah. exactly what I was complaining about. I said, it's been approved. The liquidation is still pending. And right now, it's still pending, not because of my um, my documents not being submitted. It's Where's because the, the withholdment yeah. of yeah. something from Patafa. That's why I said, you know, this is, uh, what am I supposed to do? So that's from September 2021, am I correct? Yes. Yung yes, sir. Uh -oh. Until, until now, wala pa. Wala pa po. Wala pa, wala pa. Okay. Another question, bakit nadadrag ang name ng mother mo? Doon sa issue ng Patafa. But parang siya, pati siya kakasuhan. I think they know where it hurts. I don't really know. Like, if you look, Pag tinignan po natin, they charge Mr. Lafferty persona ng grata. Oh, persona ng grata. In their NSA. I don't understand that. Why would you charge Mr. Lafferty persona ng He literally sponsored the whole association. 2020, 2021. Oh, Second okay. is, they say they're going to charge Vitaly something. I don't understand that. You said that you're acting on the complaint, quote-unquote complaint, of Mr. Petrov, when Mr. Petrov said this and this, and now you're charging him of something. Like, it seems like it's a leverage or it's a point to to make me feel, you know, my mom, my mom is one of the nicest person I know. Yeah. Maybe she's not, uh, you know, she maybe not very efficient to do the things, but she does it with, with how the best way that she can. And I know that she didn't steal. She even fronted her own money. So I don't understand what, what is Patafa doing. I, I have, I can't comprehend it. I'm, I'm really sorry, I'm getting pissed, but I really have no idea why drag my mom's name, why drag Mr. Lafferty's name, why drag Vitaly's name. I'm, I have no idea. Uh, hi, AJ. Hi. Uh, hi, hi, sir. Um, ano lang, I have a question. There is this apostilled uh, statement of Sir Sergei Bubka of the World yeah. Athletics. Sinabi, sinabi niya na you've built a wall between Patafa and uh, your coach, Vitaly. Um, what's your comment on that? I think we yeah. need to ask they, you, you built a wall that to the point na they can't interact with each other. What's your comment on that? Okay, I have two things. I think that's a very good question, but I have a very straightforward answer. So I think there's two things. He said that I built the wall. I think that's that's very odd because in less than two, three days, they were able to get affidavit signed and get in a conference call with Vitaly. If I indeed set a really good wall then I failed really poorly. I think then the second thing you need to be asking is, did Bubka actually write that affidavit? And who actually prepared that affidavit? If that isn't, how, how I'm sorry, Bubka was never part of my team. Um, Bubka introduced me to the scholarship back in 2013 when he was running for president in World Athletics. That was the story of it. And from that day on, the only time I talk to Bubka is when Vitaly calls him and tells 
me thinks about the technical aspect of pole vault. Anything other than that, he really has no no idea. All the information that he knows, I believe, is from Mr. Huico. So I don't I don't really know. Um, I just know that the affidavit was prepared for him. It wasn't. It wasn't like, oh, I, this is my affidavit of the. This is my recollection, or this is no. It, there was a clear instructions, and yeah, I think that in itself is very difficult to just ignore. That you know, why would the? Uh, um, I don't want to. Uh, let's just say the people that is outside of the system, at least the way the Philippine system works, would be involved in such a way. And seems like he knows everything instead, but also in that um, um, affidavit, he said that he didn't have any idea about the arrangement from September before the call. So therefore, all his information really did come from one guy and one guy only. <laughs> May balita kasi ano eh, uh, lumabas na. No? Marami daw countries na lumalapit sa'yo. Lalo na nung, ano, nung dinap ka na sa national team. Marami daw countries na lumalapit sa'yo, uh, naniligaw sa'yo. <laughs> is, is this true and uh, may chance ba na mag-ibang bayan ka? Ganun? You will represent other I countries hope. in the future tournaments? Ganun? You know, in, in all honesty, I hope it doesn't come to that point. Um, I'm fighting for this because I owe the Filipino people. I want to represent my country where I'm born. I owe them. No, I'm here because of them, because of who I am, because of how I grew up. You know, that there's pride in. You know, I, I I haven't said this, but you know, there's there's this sense of really I, like maybe this is not the good, not very good side of me, but. You know, seeing these guys look at me like, what is this guy doing here? And then beating all of them, winning the meet, you know, getting their respect. You know, there's a different sense of fulfillment in that. That's my egotistical side of being an athlete. And I love that feeling. I love that. I cherish that. That's, I take pride in that, you know. <laughs> they, they never seem a Filipino a tondo guy who competes with these Europeans, these Americans, and actually have a fighting chance and actually, you know, make them get out of their seat and actually go a, a mile over what they need to be doing. And I take pride in that. I hope it doesn't come to that point. It is true. Um, <laughs> it is true, but this all come about because it's simple. My federation doesn't seem to want me. It's very simple, and you know, I think anyone would jump if I'm if I'm a NSA president or a Olympic Committee president of another country. I see an athlete that is ranked high enough. I would want to try and get into that. You know, and I'm not saying that it should be the it should be done that way, but. It's the sport. It's it's how sadly it is. I hope it doesn't come to that point. I, I just want to make that clear. Hey, maybe Thank one you. last question, EJ, for me, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, no worries. You, you know, Mr. Wiko was saying that, you know, he was instrumental in introducing you to your coach or he, you know, to his connections, I suppose, with, with Bubka. Um, uh, and I think he also mentioned that your, your parents are also involved in the Federation. Mr. Lafferty, Lafferty is also a friend of Mr. Rico before. Do you see this ending amicably? amicably? I mean, is there uh, is there still a chance that you know, since you guys were old friends, I mean, I don't know if there are any back channels going on. Is there uh, any possibility that you think this can be resolved amicably? Um, I think I mean, you know, among friends, said, you know, you know, for someone who said. It's straight, you know, Mr. Wiko has been nothing short of a good person before, let's just say before 2019. He's been nothing, in my, in my perspective, I trusted the guy 
It was true. He was there when I was looking for a doctor to repair my ACL. I trusted him. I asked him for his opinions on a lot of things. And you know, he's a big sports official and I respect him. He helps me out in, in the way that I saw it and I respect him. But you know, there, there are lines that, that you shouldn't, I believe, there are lines that can be crossed and there are lines that you don't go back to. And I think in this situation, it's, I believe we can, maybe. I'm, I will cross that bridge when we get there. But I think first he needs to really, you know, maybe take the first step, maybe admit that this is all a sense of being vindictiveness. I have no idea for what his reasons are for doing this. And I don't see the point of like getting Mr. Lafferty persona and grata, asking my coach and saying that my coach will be now having a case in the world that, that like these things, I don't see how we can just, you know, Ignore it, yeah. Ignore and just take a step further away. And as much as I want to take responsibility to my performance in Tokyo, I don't want that to happen ever again. And this as well, I don't want this to ever happen again. Out of, I'm sorry, I'm going to be just frank. The two things or the thing that Mr. Huiko is saying he has the reason why to do this is an affidavit from Sergey. That affidavit was never even back by Sergey. I have no idea, but it was, I know it was prepared by, by none other than by him. I don't know for whatever reason this whole thing was concocted to or mixed up or built into whatever it is. I just feel that this is not something that I can just you know, like literally just like do this and okay, we'll be fine. You made a mistake, it's fine. I, I think there's, it's been blown out of proportion. My name has been thrown out of the public like, like some kind of criminal. A guy literally called me a criminal in one breath twice, dragged my mom's name, dragged my family's name and everybody who has said that would be enough. I think it's very difficult to just say, you know, okay, um, everything is all forgotten and forgiven until maybe there's actually a step or a sense of remorse from the other side. Then we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But I have nothing against him personally. Maybe I'm very disappointed. Maybe I am a bit angry because they know where it hurts. They know where to put the knife in and dragging my mom's name into it is that's just a big low blow. Dragging the people who have helped the association and helped me personally. That that doesn't make any sense for me. So to to answer your question, I yeah. will cross that bridge when we get there. Well, EJ Obiana, thank you very much for, for sharing your time with us. I know it that you should be training and uh, you at least should have had breakfast by now. <laughs> uh, no worries. Uh, but, uh, so, but we appreciate your time and, and if you don't mind, we'd like to reach out to you again if, if your schedule permits. Sure. And because sure. you know, we, we anticipate this to be um, news again in, in the future.